Well, I uh, I sort of told you I was going to bring you back, and then forgot to hit the start on the camera. Um, I did take in uh, take my air hose and blow out around everything once I got all the injector lines loose, and I got the fuel line off, which actually didn't have a lot of pressure on it. So it tells me I'm losing. I'm losing some. I mean, she does run just a tad rough, cold, sometimes at an idle. I think I've got an injector that's possibly bad, which, you know, we know that this is very possible. So I will actually be able to tell if it's really bad because it'll actually have cleaned that one cylinder out. You know, one one of the runners will be cleaner than the other or whatever. But anyway, I got all the bolts loose, I think. Wiring harness is the only thing I'm going to have to fight a little bit, I believe. And of course, you know, a hose or two. But uh, basically, everything is loose now. So uh, I could actually, if I wanted to, why don't I do that? Let me grab a couple long zip ties. I think I did this last time. Kind of pull that up out of the way. Probably one of them would have been fine. Nope. I don't remember pulling it on there that far. Uh, I gotta get a cat out of the garage. No, no. Get out of there. Come on. Come on. Come on. All right. Okay. It's not perfect, but it's it is somewhat out of the way now. Let's see if I got all the bolts off this time. There's one back one I may or may not have got all the way. Oh, of course not. <laughs> Hardest one to get to, of course. Got it. Okay. All right, so this has to stay. Get that up out of here. like I'm hung on something. I bet you. Let me think about this for a minute. What's the odds of that uh, that socket I got down there with those extensions not hooking on that back plastic panel? <laughs> no, but it's not. You know that plastic uh, cover on the back of this? That's not going back on there when I put this back in. That's a guarantee. Guarantee. All right, well, we still have to have these. Well, I'm gonna have to get my shop back out and do some cleaning and I can see it appears that number five cylinder is cleaner than the rest. I'm gonna show you. No guarantees, but one, three, five, seven. And all the rest of them are carboned up. So I would say that's the injector I'm starting to hang are having at least bleeding through. 
would be maybe more of uh, an accurate statement. Well, there's what I had set up her on that uh, cinder. <laughs> oh, I love my job. Anyway, wish I did this for a living. Um, I'm gonna get my shop back out and uh, clean all this up here. Make sure that nothing went down in any of them holes. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring you back when I start changing that cinder, which is pretty, pretty obvious now how to do it. It's easy to get to. So, uh, and then uh, what I am gonna do is that this cover, which makes it almost impossible to uh, get to anything, uh, got a 10 millimeter bolt. I could not get on that thing, save my life, and I don't know why. It looks pretty easy to get to, but uh, like I said, I know you can get to it without taking that off there, but because um, I've seen guys do videos on it, but what I found is the one or two guys I've watched, they don't actually show you doing it. They say, it's way back here where you can't get to it. The next thing you know, okay, I've replaced the sender. Well, how long did it take? 16 months, you know, or, or three days, or what else did you have to do? And I just cannot contort that way anymore like I used to be able to. So uh, I'm going to take that off, make it go away. That way, if it ever has to be done again, I have a funny feeling this engine's going to have to come out. And um, we'll, uh, you know, we'll see. But uh, anyway, that's where we're at right now, and I'll bring you back once I get everything cleaned up. All right, now we're going to actually replace the original culprit. The reason I did all this is just for this thing right here. I'm probably in your way. There. Cleaned everything up on the, down here in the valley and the runners. Cleaned up some. Yeah, I've seen better or I've seen worse. Uh, and this has been replaced before because it doesn't weigh anything. And I remember the one I pulled off that 07, she was brass and she was heavy. So this is probably another Dorman part number. Made in Mexico. I don't see a number. Uh, well, it's different than this one. This one doesn't have any numbers on it at all. It is the same three wire, but um, anyway, comes out of there pretty easy. It has kind of got sealant and a crushable washer already on it, so something you don't really have to mess with much. I know what I ran into when I did that in 2007 it was um, hang on, there's a piece of uh, garbage down in the hole here, some of the sealant. Uh, was uh man i couldn't get the um, wire harness plugged back in it kind of fought me a bit probably in your way and i apologize Plugs in. Now, am I close enough? And there it went. A little easier than the last one. Okay, so I know you watched watched me fight this just for that one little stinking thing. That's all there was to it. That's how much fight it was for me, anyway. I hope you guys have a lot better luck at doing these than me. The Gen 3s aren't so bad. I can actually get to them without doing this because of that plastic cover. And when I put that intake back on there, I know if you watch it that seven at Yukon, you'll you've seen that you can actually see that when that cover is not on there anymore. And I've already took it off this intake, so uh, I'm gonna go find the gaskets now, and uh, I'm gonna set this intake back on there. I probably won't bring you back till this thing is about ready to start. Most of it's, you know, there's other people out there that's got video on how to pull intake manifolds. This is really not that hard to do. Um, it's you know, this actually tells me though that there is an injector starting to go bad, and the gaskets with 200,000 miles is probably not a bad idea anyway. Although I wasn't really seeing a vacuum leak, um, at least I wasn't getting a code for anything like that. It's still a good idea to kind of look this stuff over. This thing, I don't know if it's had plugs and wires on it. The plug wires are red. I can't remember if that's factory, if those are aftermarket AutoZone specials or not. 
but um, uh, I probably will replace those too. But like I said, I use a lot of antifreeze. Maybe it was really low and they just filled it up and it's just used to, you know, filling everything back up, got all the air out of the system. I'm gonna keep an eye on it, but I have a bad feeling this thing's either got a bad head or it's got, um, it's got a gasket going bad. And these are 243 heads, so these are real common head. I might even have another set of these. And um, as a matter of fact, those cores that they're talking about, um, those three, three of those are five threes. Now they probably are all Gen threes, but uh, I think those use 243 heads. I may be wrong. 243, 243. I have to look those up. Where those actually fit because I can't remember what's on my Malibu here. But anyway, that's that's a future problem. Right now, let's get on with what we're doing. Okay, it's back together. Um, except the battery. I guess I probably ought to do that. Uh, that's kind of dirty. How does that thing look? Hmm, about the same. Let me uh, put you on a tripod and clean that up a little bit. Guess I should have thought that through. went back together really easy uh, it's you know it's like anything else once you do it a few times it's not difficult to do it's just really didn't expect to have to do it I kept thinking to myself well surely other people's changed this without having to do that but I just physically cannot keep reaching like that anymore I did put the new uh, oil filler cap on there too That's done. All right. Now here's the deal. I have no idea how this thing is going to start to run with that uh, throttle body still not being. Um, even though I completely unhooked the battery and stuff like that, this thing may rev up. But what I'm going to do though is we're going to see if it fixed my oil pressure gauge is what I'm really after in this particular video. Oil pressure. So that's another check engine light that should be gone. Yeah. Now this thing is cold. You know, I mean, it was running two hours ago for maybe five minutes. So 35 pounds. I wished it was more than that, but I am not going to complain at this point. So let me. Wait a minute, something happened here. Uh, I gotta go back here. I must hit a button. Somehow I got an Acura. No. Hang on, I gotta reset this thing. Because this is... Um... Somehow I got a... I wonder if the cat didn't get in here and walk on the buttons. Sorry guys, I know, this is a fail. By the way, I did check the air conditioner yesterday, and it does work. So I'm pretty happy about that too, because I wasn't for sure. Okay, yes, that's what this is. All right, now I still have vent solenoid, which I knew was 449. What else do we got? That's it. So that one did go away. We're down to just one. Now here is the one I want to do. Let's go back to live data. Uh -huh can't do all this at the same time and I know there's going to be a big glare off of this so what I want to do is go down to TPS see it's a 20 percent I don't like that I don't know that it's supposed to be there or not and I have a feeling if I rev this up 19.6 it's going to go to 3,000 well it's a 25 24 23 if you watch it on here 
Because there's a relearn on this that you can do yourself. It's like start it up, idle it for three minutes, shut it off for 60 seconds or 90 or whatever it was, 60 seconds, I think, and then start it up and run it for another three minutes and then that should fix it. Well, believe it or not. Now she's stuck out 3,000. There it goes. See, I'm not really sure. I don't have my foot on the pedal either, guys, so. It's still in relearn mode because I was told that it was possible that you could do this and it would, um, that um, if you unhook the battery, it would fix it too. And I had a pretty good feeling that that was not going to be the case. Basically, if you don't have a reader to relearn that, and I'm talking about not, not a code reader, I'm talking about an actual uh, device that actually relearns this stuff, whether it be HP tuners or those all tech, whatever those ex more expensive deals are that will relearn this kind of stuff. If you don't have this, man, you're alone for the ride. You know, that's all I'm going to say about that because I'm pretty disappointed. Yeah, see, now the oil pressure is about 20 pounds. Now, I have not changed oil since I got this. So that is something I am going to do. I have the oil and filter already. But um, at least I got another code off of it. I'm pretty happy with that. 18.8 is what the TPS is reading now. I guess I should have showed you the whole thing, what it was reading. So um, that's actually what I was after. If you rev it up just a little, it goes up to 33 and then slowly will drop itself back down. And that should come back a lot faster than that. So um, I guess what I might have to do is just drive it out of it. And because uh, I don't have an HP tuner, nor do I have a way to uh, to do this. I could buy a machine, but Doc, on those things are expensive. So I'm not even going to mess with it. I'm just going to drive it out of it and make it work. So that's another, at least, for now, that is one more code that's off of this thing. And uh, so we're down to we're down to just one left. Make sure this thing ain't spewing oil all over. I don't have the cover back on it again. Because I figured I might have to you know, get back into this. But it actually is running a little smoother, man. I cleaned the crap out of all those in the ports and uh, not only the intake side, but on the deal. I mean it is actually running smoother. Well, I'm not so sure it may not have had just a little bit of a vacuum leak on one of those um, you know one of them gaskets they didn't look terrible but you know how it is with 200,000 miles on them you do expect that kind of stuff see how they're kind of warped out of you know I had that same issue with that uh, that 2007 but those things were crushed and warped and stuff so it's very possible that they were we did have a little bit of a vacuum leak so anyway um, and I did not put that back cover back on her. And what that does then is that allows you to kind of, you can actually kind of see that. You can actually see that sensor down there without that cover on it. Well, you can't do that with that thing on there. So, you know, I'm not saying take them off and, you know, keep them off, but uh, I'm not putting them back on just in case I have another problem with this, you know, Chinese. Uh, you know, <laughs> apparatus, have to do this again. Anyway, guys, that's it for now, and uh, I'm going to go drive this for a bit, see if I can't get this thing to straighten up a little more.